Hey guys, today we are going to be comparing box plots. We're going to answer the question, how do I compare box plots and what are some key differences between box plots? So let's just start by reviewing the five key numbers of a box plot, minimum, maximum, medium, Q1 and Q3. So remember the first dot is the minimum. The last dot is the maximum. This middle line is the median. And then Q1 is the median of the lower half and Q3 is the median of the upper half. So we have box plots that can be distributed differently. So this first one is symmetric because the box plot looks the same on both sides of the graph. Then this one is skewed right because the whiskers and boxes are smaller on the left. There's more on the right, that's how you could think of it. And then this one is skewed left because there's more on the left, the whiskers and boxes are smaller on the right side. So now we want to mark these three box plots as symmetric, skewed right, or skewed left. So this one has more on the right, so it is skewed right. This next one has more on the left, so it is skewed left. And then this last one is pretty evenly spread, so it is symmetrical. Okay, let's look at this next scenario. It says a middle school band director collects data to determine how much time per week sixth and seventh grade students spend practicing their instruments. The box plots to the right display her findings. So here is grade six. It has more of a spread between the minimum and the maximum. And then grade seven, that would be pretty skewed to the left because there's more on the left. Okay, let's look at number two. It says, what is the difference between the medians of grade six and grade seven? So let's find these. Looks like the median of grade six is going to be at seven. And then the median of grade seven is at five. So the difference of them would be seven minus five, which is two. Then three says determine the IQR of grade six and seven. What is the difference? So for grade six, their IQR would be eight minus three, which is five. And then grade seven, their IQR would be six minus two, which is four. So now I'm gonna find the IQR's difference by subtracting them and I get one. And then four says which grade has a wider range in variability and why? So you can visually see that grade six is spreading more than grade seven. You could also find the range of grade six and the range of grade seven to see that numerically. So let's do that. The range for grade six would be the maximum of 12 minus the minimum of one, which is 11. So the range of grade six is 11, and then we can find the range of grade seven to compare. It would be seven minus zero, which is seven. So which grade has a wider range in variability? That would be grade six because we could visually see that it has a wider spread. And we calculated the range and it also had a larger range of 11 versus seventh grade had a range of seven. Okay, number five says, complete the statement below. 
the range in hours practice for grade six was blank the range of hours practice for grade seven. So we found both of the ranges and it looks like the range for grade six was 11, which is greater than the range in hours practice for grade seven. So I would fill in this phrase with greater than. Okay, then we have three statements at the bottom that we're gonna mark as true or false. So the first one says the minimum of both grade six and grade seven are the same. That is false. Grade seven has a minimum of zero. Grade six has a minimum of one. Then the second one says the median of grade six and the maximum of grade seven are the same. That would be true. The median of grade six is right here in line with the maximum of grade seven. They have that same number of seven. So this one is true. And then the last one says the interquartile range of grade six is greater than the interquartile range of grade seven. Um, so we determined the IQRs of both of them on number three. IQR of six was five and the IQR of seven was four. So this is true.